Hi everybody. The title of this audiobook is Hustling for Cash Money with Metal Recycling by Dominic Costa and also read by Dominic Costa. Copyright 2013 by Dominic Costa. All rights reserved. No part of this book may be re reproduced in any form without permission from me, the author. Reviewers may quote brief passages and reviews. Hey, leave me a good review or comment. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and tell your friends. Thank you. Now let's go make some money. Introduction. I earn an extra $100 to $150 or more per month without any superhuman effort, money, or fuel hustling for cash money with metal recycling. It's true and I do. This book will teach you about our most recycled metals and plastics that are recycled for cash. You can hustle for cash money with metal recycling and it is easy. When you change how you look at the world, it is amazing how things that were invisible to you once before will suddenly appear right before your eyes. This thought process of thinking about what you want to see and then seeing it will change your life. Every time I see an abandoned refrigerator on my drive home, I see a $10 United States bill. At the current rate, that is, of 48 cents per pound of recyclable metal. I see more recyclable dollars than I ever did before. Here's what you're going to learn. Chapter 1, The Four Whys. Chapter 2, Time for Double Ds. Not those, but due diligence. Chapter 3, What are your goals? Chapter 4, What do you need? Chapter 5, Getting Set Up. Chapter 6, Breaking Down Items, Time In versus Profitability. Chapter 7, Collect. Chapter 8, Network Baby. Chapter 9, Collect More and Make More. Chapter 10, Cash in your recyclable chips. Chapter 11, repeat. Chapter 12, how this all started, or Josephine's story. Chapter 13, the hoarder house. Conclusion, everyday hustling. Acknowledgements, and finally, disclaimer and FTC notice. And now our beginning, chapter one, the four whys. Why number one, to make extra money. Money isn't everything, but it sure can help you survive or improve your lot or lifestyle. This income stream will add to your budget. These streams of income, along with any other money job or hustle you have, will increase your daily, monthly, annual cash income flow. This recycling hustle can be a budget difference maker for your life and relieve some of your budget stress. Also, there is the intrinsic value of making where you live a little bit cleaner, safer, and better to look at. You can drive or walk around where you live and see less trash because it's getting picked up and recycled. A better environment where our air, soil, and water can be better for everyone where we live and put some money in our pockets too. It's a win-win situation. Why number two? It is psychologically satisfying to make cash money by yourself and for yourself with no boss. You are in charge. How much effort you expend is up to you. Many of my brother and sister recyclers or scrappers drive around either the night before or the early morning of trash pickup days to find trash to cash recycling treasures. I currently do not, but by keeping my eyes open during my commute to and from work, I generate $100 to $150 or more per month cash. Why number three? It is physically satisfying. Get a, getting active and using your body in a physical way to do all this helps your body get in shape and helps release those feel-good endorphins. As the wise man said, today is the youngest you're ever going to be. That's true. Let's get our bodies moving and our minds engaged. Staying active with recycling can help you maintain fitness levels to enjoy your non-work activities even more. Why number four? It is spiritually satisfying. Remove stuff that can environmentally and visually pollute where you live. Get a sense of giving back to the world you were born into and leave it better. It is very rewarding to make your living, work, drive, and walk through areas of your life more appealing because there will be less junk and trash to view because you hustled and made a difference while putting some money in your pocket. This recycling is like doing your good deed for the day and you get paid. That's crazy good. If you believe in karma, that's even better energy you are creating for the universe by doing good works. That's a win-win situation if there ever was one. Cash money is a great motivator. Chapter 2, Time for Double Ds, not those, but due diligence. Due diligence for this chapter is finding out what can be recycled where you live. Who is paying for those recyclables? How much are they paying for those items? Where are they located? What is their distance from you? That's going to be your transportation cost. And what are their days and hours of operation? What are we collecting? Here are some examples. 
plastic drink containers, glass drink containers, aluminum can containers, copper pipe, strip wire, number one and number two copper, aluminum cast, clean and dirty, aluminum wire, aluminum sheet, painted and clean, brass, magnets, lead, solid cast or wrought iron, pressed steel, tin, like file cabinets, refrigerators, freezers, etc. Mixed metal, power and garden tools, small home appliances, microwaves, toasters, vacuum cleaners, etc. What countries do this besides the United States of America? This is a partial listing of countries where this may be possible, and if not, then it should be. Canada, Great Britain, Ireland, South Africa, Italy, France, Spain, Germany, Romania, China, Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand, Lebanon, India, Iraq, Turkey, Greece, Portugal. Do you have recyclers that pay cash money close to you? Close being determined by you if what is described in this book is even possible to do where you live. Find out where the recyclers are and their hours of operation as well as what days they are open. Some countries or states may not have mandatory recycling for drink containers, but may have paying recyclers for metals. Find out what is possible and returnable for cash in your location. If you are fortunate enough to have many recyclers, this can be a big bonus. You will be able to compare prices, for your money that is, hours of operation, days of the week open, customer care service, and proximity to you that best suits your personal situation. This step is crucial yet illuminating to initiating your recycling journey for cha-ching cash money. Due diligence, Double D's will answer your questions to guide your decisions on the possibilities of hustling for cash money with metal recycling. You need to find out what you can do where you live. You need to find out uh, how you can call up and find out where they, where they are located and also how much are they paying per pound to determine if it's worth your time and energy to collect these metals. Chapter 3, what are your goals? This is huge for all life undertakings in my estimation. Goal setting makes things in life a possibility. Sitting and thinking on this gets your mind ready which is the spark of your physical actions. Try listening to Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret on YouTube. His spoken words will and can be a source of life-changing motivation to any goals you have in life. You will learn as you go on your recycling journey and keep yourself aware and ready to grow and improve your processes. Your goals may include how much you wish to make full or part-time by the day, week, month, or year. What abilities do you have to undertake this like your health, physical capabilities, storage space, transportation, family commitments, work responsibilities, etc.? What will you do with your money after you make your stacks of cash? My goals always included the triple F's. They are financial, family, and fun. It is such a feeling of accomplishment to add to a bank account, add to a retirement account, add to an emergency fund, or pay down a mortgage or two. It was also rewarding to treat my family to a special meal or contribute to a vacation fund for a bigger vacation. Fixing a toy or one of my hobby fun items was personally rewarding as well. Doing all these things without touching the regular family budget dollars was fun. The triple F's, financial, family, and fun goals motivate me. Spend a little time thinking about what motivates you. Set some goals with some steps and get after it. Write those goals down. It'll help you achieve them. Achieving goals can get some satisfaction flowing in your life and the memories of achieving them build your self-esteem and will energize and propel you through the hard times which most certainly occur. Building your self-esteem and increasing your knowledge of delayed gratification, also known as the really good stuff, comes after you work hard and smart. This can sustain your mental, physical, and spiritual energies and get you to some goals being achieved. This is truly a positive beast that will feed itself and help you live a great life. Now go get it done! Chapter 4 What Do You Need? How do you transport yourself where you live? Is it by foot, bicycle, motorcycle, car, or truck? Are you going to put your stuff that you collect in plastic bags, cardboard boxes, trash cans, or bins? Where are you going to keep it once you have it? To make it worth your efforts, you need to store usually great amounts. Depends what you are collecting. 
to generate lots of cash when you finally bring it into your favorite or closest recycling redemption center. Storage can be done with smaller areas too, especially if you're collecting the pricier metals. Small autos can get the job done, as well as small to medium to full-size trucks. Obviously, a big truck, though, can handle bigger and odd-sized pieces or items and appliances. The value of your time is up to you, of course. You need to figure out, at a minimum, of what your energy or fuel cost will be. Driving 20 miles with your bike during 3 bucks over 3 hours is better than nothing if your back is against the wall. But doing that in any gas diesel vehicle is not business smart. Let's face it, kids. Our best asset we get as humans is our time. Respecting your time and using it well will better your life and put some cheddar or cash in your pockets. In my situation, I load a full-size 8-foot bed truck in about 15 minutes, drive to my recycling center and a load to get cash in an additional 20 minutes before heading home for a final 15 minutes. This is a round trip of about one hour where I will clear after fuel cost about $20 United States currency. 20 bucks an hour works for me. Your situation very well may be different, but this is the current acceptable minimum I will accept. You need to have this conversation with yourself so you can make the best decisions. Do you have family members, friends, or partners to work with? Including someone can help a lot in this labor-intensive business, but also can create opportunities for quality time as well. If you are a parent, what better way to model a work ethic for a child than to bring them with you as you hustle for cash money with metal recycling? The time shared with my own kids has been priceless. Back when I recycled newsprint old newspapers, my two kids, when the help wasn't looking, would climb the majestic paper peaks of paper and slide down them. It's urban sledding, ghetto style, I know, but they had a ton of fun. The locations, situations, and people we have seen have been alternatingly wonderful, appalling, and hilarious. Sometimes all three have appeared with one incident with some great observed life lessons throughout each one. It helped teach to look for opportunity and seize it when it appears. Now that's a life lesson a parent can impart to their children and feel good about. Remember, they are watching what we do with a whole lot more weight than what we say as parents. Get out there and lead show them with our positive actions. Remember to have extra gloves and remind them to dress appropriately for the day's job. This would include closed-toed shoes, clothes that can get dirty, long sleeve shirts, and long pants. Really, young children probably need to stay in your vehicles or near your side at all times. Safety is first. Chapter 5, Getting Set Up. I highly recommend some space where you can store your collectibles so you can collect enough to make it worth your efforts where you turn them in. Side and backyards are perfect. Garages can do the job too. If you are a tenant, you will know what is acceptable and where it will be allowed to be able to store your stuff. Some metals, like the different kinds of iron, come in different shapes and can eat up your space as you accumulate it so you will need space or you will have to limit the types of items you collect. Large 33 or more gallon plastic bags you can seal or tie up to close are perfect for many redemptive items like aluminum or plastic drink containers. And you diminish or eliminate any vermin, that's insects, mice, etc. problems. I use those bags inside of old trash cans with lids. And as the cans or bags fill up, I can pull them out for placement in my storage area. A new bag goes into my trash can and a new collection begins. I keep three 33-gallon trash cans to separate my family's glass drink containers into their respective colors of green, amber or brown, and clear. This saves a bit of time in getting my hands dirty when I bring them in for cash. Many redemptive centers require that glass be separated into their respective colors in order to get paid. I drive these same glass-filled trash cans to the recycling or redemptive centers and move my already separated glass into the center's containers or trash cans to save time and to keep clean. I currently use about four or five gallon buckets in my outdoor storage area to separate out some pricier metals. I put smaller copper bits and pieces I come across in one. I put brass in another. I keep two buckets for all the copper wire I come across from appliances. I drill nice size 1 8 to quarter inch holes in the bottom of the buckets for water or rain drainage and of course small kid and pet safety is number one. I don't want to get anyone stuck or any animal stuck in a bucket. 
gloves are a must to keep clean from the collected containers, aluminum, glass, and plastic drink containers typically, and to protect your fingers or hands from injury when handling especially heavy, sharp metallic objects or broken glass. I use cheap vinyl gloves especially for when I'm turning in my drink containers. They often have residual drink fluids in them and can get a bit nasty to handle when you turn them in. When you bring them in for cash, you usually have to empty them from your bags to the recycling center's containers. Getting these juices on your hands can suck. I use cheap, heavier leather gloves for the handling of my bulkier, heavier, and often sharp-edged metallic collectibles. Bleeding cuts suck. Smashed fingers are no fun. Keep a couple of gloves or pairs of gloves in your vehicle. You'll appreciate them as you slide that abandoned refrigerator into the back of your truck or move that greasy old stove or barbecue as well. Please wear shoes. Broken glass and bare feet don't mix. Dropping heavy stuff on your toes doesn't end well typically either. One emergency room visit in this day and age can wipe out multiple years of profits. Be safe, kids. I keep a couple of magnets in the back of my truck bed as well to ascertain if some items I come across are iron-based metals. Some recycling centers collect magnets for cash, but I kept a couple of big speaker magnets for this job. You may have a Harbor Freight tool store in your local region, and they have magnets too for the low, low price on sale nearly all the time. Some basic tools are a must. A small pair of wire clip cutters is perfect for removing copper-filled appliance wires or cords. One each of a Phillips screwdriver as well as a standard flathead screwdriver are great for opening, removing, or prying off anything metallic you come across. A small sledgehammer, at least one pound, is useful for breaking apart or down barbecues that I find too. As an upgrade, a rechargeable variable speed drill with various size and types of bits, flatheads, Phillips, Torx, Hex, etc. will save the muscles in your forearms and decrease the amount of time you take apart or break down any item. As you know, whenever you get more efficient with your time, you increase your profitability. Keeping a container of low-cost cleaning wipes in your vehicle or storage area is great for cleaning up anything that spills. They are great for cleaning your hands as well. Paper towels, bottled water, snacks, and anything else that you can think of to make your collection journey clean and comfortable is also great to keep on hand. Proper and regular hydration can keep you hustling and out of the hospital or worse. Chapter 6 Breaking Down Items Time In versus Profitability This chapter will come down to you and your thoughts and personal money situation. If I'm pressed for time, maybe I don't break down that cast aluminum and pressed steel barbecue and just dump it with the rest of my general metal load. Truthfully for me, 99% of the time, I'll take apart those cast aluminum barbecues because I know if I accumulate a couple of those dirty cast aluminum barbecue cases, I'll have at minimum a $35 to $40 cash score for 15 minutes of personal labor for me. That's $140 to $160 per hour. Help your planet, help your local ecology, and your wallet too. Higher-end models of barbecue or grillers also have brass, copper, and zinc alloy burners which also have a great return. Simply scratch the burners with a tool or a nail, and if it reveals a bright yellow color, then you can have scored. Eight cents per pound versus, uh, for iron currently uh, at the time of this reading versus $1.65 per pound for brass. These were the prices at the time of this writing and are based on my location in Southern California, the Los Angeles Harbor area. Some people will strip electrical wires and appliance cords to reveal the pricey copper metal versus the lower price per pound of dirty copper cord. This can be time intensive and it has not worked out for me versus cash or ROI, return on investment. Your situation may vary and it may work for you. There are YouTube videos available with different ideas on how to construct one as well. It may be worth it to strip your wires because strip power cords become number one copper and can quadruple your price per pound. Again, you've got to personally measure your time and how much cord you have. On another note, your power cords may have brass mail parts which slide, of course, into the wall outlets. A simple twist with a pair of pliers will pop them out in seconds and you can save them in your brass storage bucket. Again, this is all about your own personal decision on your use of time. Chapter 7, Collect. You're all set up and ready to collect. I start at home. 
My current location charges a redemption fee for each drink container in plastic, glass, or aluminum that my family purchased at any type of store. Why put your paid redemptive fees into your city's weekly recycle bin when you can keep it yourself and make money? Start with those, bag them, and when you reach what you believe is a large enough amount for your vehicle, get them in and get your money. As you do any of your regular driving from your home, keep your eyes open for any recyclables and scoop them up. A lot of great stuff is left curbside in both residential and multi-unit neighborhoods, especially the night before or the morning of regularly scheduled trash pickup days. Try to own your own neighborhood for big appliance recyclables. Sometimes a good time to keep your eyes open and head on a swivel is on the weekends. Many do-it-yourselfers complete their tasks on the weekends and place their old metal stuff or large appliances out anytime from Saturday afternoon through Sunday night. If you see something in a driveway and if you have time, stop and knock on the door. Ask to take it and offer to help by taking any other recyclables away. If they're not home, try leaving a handwritten note on one of your new business cards with your request. I got a lot of stuff this way and got future regular customers as well. If your drive is by commercial or manufacturing properties, you'll see things as well. People will appreciate that you are helping them. Speak respectfully. Dress decently. Look and be clean with no offensive slogans or pictures on t-shirts, for example. If you have a regular job, recyclables may be at your fingertips as well. Keep your eyes and ears open at your regular work site. One Sunday at my most visited recycling center, I witnessed a group of three men bring a type of large, if it fit into the back of a regular truck bed that's about eight feet, that is, copper distiller from a job work site that scored them a $3,500 cash score. $3,500 with one huge piece of copper. Wow. One plumber friend kept his scrap copper and brass which he turns in once a year after the United States Thanksgiving holidays for usually about $3,000 in redemptive cash. He uses this to fund his family's Christmas and New Year's holiday uh, gifts, food, parties. Their holiday parties were outstanding. As you've changed your mindset to that of a cash-making recycler, you will be amazed at what you will begin to see. Getting your mind dialed in for any task is the first step for success. You'll see. Things you previously drove or walked by before and did not see will suddenly become apparent to you. Pick them up and profit. Changing your mindset, mindset or view of the world will change your life. Sorry I got loud on mindset. <laughs> As humans, the way we look at and perceive our world around us determines our quality and quantity of life. Spend a little time and ponder the information in this paragraph. You will change your life. Be prepared to be amazed. If you have any of the brands of smartphones, please consider adding a Craigslist app like Craigslist Pro where you can install a phone alert for specific recycling items where you live. If the alerts match your time capabilities, you'll be able to respond to those curb alerts in your neighborhood for metals typically or anything else you are trying to find. People want to get rid of their items as soon as possible. When you respond to their Craigslist ads, you are helping them. Don't forget to knock on the door, introduce yourself, and ask if they have any other recyclables you could remove for them. If they are not home, leave a card note with your contact information. Oops, we're getting to Chapter 8's focus. Chapter 8, Network, baby. It's simple, really. Let people know what you are doing. Own what you do. Let people know you can pick up their broken metal stuff for a low, low price or even free. Get cards made with your contact information. And I use Vistaprint for low-cost and professional-looking cards. And inside my printed book, there's the link. But you could find it pretty quick on Google as well. Pass them out wherever and whenever you're out. The human network will grow and the calls will come in. It takes time, but will spread how you are helping people solve a problem by removing their unwanted, broken stuff that they don't know how to get rid of or don't have the desire nor the energy to get rid of or recycle it themselves. Leave your cards at every stop and your network will grow. Some folks will begin bringing you the recyclables and dropping them off where you live. Recyclables will be attracted to you. You have become a human magnet. Creating this network will increase your profits. Get out there and network. It pays off. I have some videos as well on my YouTube channel, Coach Dom Costa, under the playlist, Hustling for Cash Money with Metal Recycling. Lots of great videos there with a lot of tips and tricks on just this. You can see some of my haul storage techniques, scrap loads, 
what my network brings me, and of course, pictures of the cash money I make, and you can make too. Check it out, plus of course, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Chapter 9, Collect More and Make More. The more you do this, the more it will become easier and the more efficient you'll become in all of your processes of collection, storage, and reclamation for cash. It's true. You'll be amazed. As time went by, I had more experiences that taught me, shaped me, and sharpened my scrapping, hustling, or recycling skills. That's a great lesson for all of life's endeavors. Sometimes you just have to sit down, think, get an idea, and get started. We're all terminal on this planet. I mean, we all gotta leave. Don't mean to get too heavy here, but we're all leaving the planet. Get started on something and get busy living. Go make that money and have that fun. I mean, money's not everything, but it's right up there with oxygen. And the more you make, the more you can give, the more you can live, the more fun you can have. It's a pretty short journey, kids. Let's get busy. Check out other recycler scrapplers on YouTube as well as me to gain knowledge of other recycling skills and tips. Just go to YouTube and type into the search box what you want to learn like metal recycling or scrapping and spend some time watching, listening, and learning. These video authors enlightened, entertained, and taught me a ton of skills that shortened my learning curve on the path of improving my efficiency and ultimately my profitability. Chapter 10 Cash in your recyclable chips. Your schedule is clear and your storage spaces are approaching full. It's time to load up what you have and bring it in to get that cash. Tie it down, of course. Don't cause an accident or damage your vehicle. This is especially true with big appliances or odd metal shapes like bed frames, curtain rods, metal furniture, etc. Always have, if possible, more than one place to bring your recyclables to. Comparing prices from your cash paying recyclers for your collected items is your own due diligence, double D's once again, to ensure the profits your hard work needs to receive the maximum cash you can for your efforts. A simple phone call or a mouse click is all it takes to put extra dollars in your pocket. Enjoy the day you bring it in. You had a plan. You worked your plan. So now enjoy the fruits of your labor. You set goals for the money you're making. Put that money at those goals. Make progress on those goals and note it. Those good feelings you get today for your accomplishments are going to be your fuel for your next round of collections. Congratulations, Mr. or Ms. Hustler Scrapper. Chapter 11, Repeat. Here's a recap of our chapter titles. Once you are set up with your schemes, dreams, goals, and mindset, you are ready to simply repeat the information of chapters 7, 8, 9, and 10. Chapter 7, Collect. Get it, break it down, and store it. Chapter 8, Network, baby. Talk it up. Offer your services to people. Let people know what you're doing. Chapter 9, Collect more, make more. See it, get it, break it down, and store it. Chapter 10, Cash in your recyclable chips. Get that money. Chapter 11, Repeat. Now, Chapter 12, How This All Started, or Josephine's Story. The school year that this story takes place in, the majority of my students consisted of ninth graders in my integrated coordinated science classes. My school mostly had kids from low to moderate income or middle income families. Ninth graders, 14 to 15 years old typically at grade at a grade 9 through 12 school are very energetic as they go on the puberty conveyor belt to adolescence and adulthood and can be very immature at times as well. The majority are, for the most part, beautiful human beings who cannot control themselves that well yet. Josephine was a member of my classes. She, like so many other of the students, had cell phones. This was at the time when iPhones had been around for about two years and were very popular with all their abilities. Not everyone had one because they or their families could not afford one. Josephine was part of this group and had an older model flip phone. On this day, during the class group activities I was monitoring, she was bemoaning the fact that she could not get one of those phones because she was broke. And being 14, she wasn't even old enough, Los Angeles, California that is, to even attempt to get a work permit to work at your typical minimum wage fast food institution or store. You have to be 16 to get one. This caught my attention because in my experience of being raised by a self-employed building contractor and his bookkeeping wife, you can make way more than minimum wage by hustling and providing a service for others. 
All this could be done at any age without a work permit. I stopped the class and shared this biology of life story that I could challenge her I can't afford it mindset, mindset by showing how I would make money with no or little money. This is where the journey began for this book. Hustling for Cash Money with Metal Recycling is the title of this book and it started here. I turned a $25 startup investment to over $3,000 in about 12 months working very, very much just part time. That's all it was, little bits of part time. I did this while sharing this journey with all of my classes. My money making hustling activities consisted of a mix of storage auction resales, yard sales, Craigslist free resales, small hustle labor jobs, and of course metal recycling. These were all done as examples for the kids. This biology of life story nearly always had a student or two in each class share their service or opportunistic story of their hustling escapades. Their money-making endeavors range from babysitting, yard sales, washing detailing cars, yard work, house cleaning, selling Christmas Lennox ornaments their mom was going to throw away on eBay, helping senior citizens with chores, etc. Yes, we did cover our California state standards for science, but we also shared our biology of life of acquiring the mindset and vision to attempt to earn the money to get that better cell phone, provide for your needs, provide for your family, or help others. A big thank you goes to Josephine, whose story has inspired many a conversation in many classes since that time to go out, see what you want, get off your butt, plan, act decisively, and get what you want in life. Life is a short ride with an end. Get moving, kids. Chapter 13, The Hoarder House. Networking gave us this job of cleaning out the appliances out of a single family home of an older woman who recently had been moved to an assisted living facility. I had been called because her next door neighbor, my friend, had been keeping an eye on the home and had access with keys. Her concern was the smell in the kitchen because the stuffed refrigerator was leaking for some reason in the kitchen and was literally rotting and sinking through the wood floor. It turns out that this appliance was stuffed with up to seven year old dated rotted food. With my son's help, we cleared out all the appliances in the home threw out all the rotting old food and closed the natural gas for this property as well to lower the chances for a house fire. This lady was not moving back according to my friend and her nearest relative was a niece who lived in Australia. My son got to see a real hoarder's house with nine months of mail stacked on the kitchen table. Hallways with so much stacked in them you had to walk sideways. Dozens of fast food styrofoam drink cups stacked perfectly in the bathroom to a washing machine so stuffed with bed sheets that a family of trapped, mummified mice were in the bottom of the tub. We received over $200 from the woman's relative for removing the appliances, plus we made over $100 in recycling all the appliances and any metal we could find in the yard too. Pretty cool stuff, and I got to share this experience with my son, with some pretty good conversation on depression and hoarding behavior. Just another day of hustling. Conclusion. Everyday hustling for that cash money. I have a full-time job as a teacher and a coach. I have a full-size truck. I have a two-mile one-way trip to work. I also use my truck for a small haul moving, estate, garage, storage unit, home, apartment, clean-out, side hustle business. I am fortunate. I pick up a high percentage of my stuff just by going back and forth to work and perhaps taking the long way home, dipping through alleys behind malls, businesses, and taking different streets to work at home. The Craigslist Pro app I have used with alerts on my iPhone for metals available close to me has been great when my schedule allows me to get them. As friends, some clients and neighbors see what I'm doing, and they will call me to pick up their recyclables for them, free of course or low cost. This all adds to my cachet of cash making recyclable items. I used to worry in my past life what others thought of me or if they giggled or snickered at why a grown ass professional is now the Sanford and son of their world. I don't care and I love it. I laugh as I keep stacking that cash and provide for my loved ones and achieve bit by bit my financial and life goals. The students in my classes dig the stories and YouTube videos. Their newfound hustles inspire me as I've hoped I inspired them as well. In fact, I have found that most of the people in my life are encouraging of my efforts and most importantly, my family is cheering me on as I or we enjoy the fruits of my labor. Here's to you and your journey. Get recycling and make that money. 
This life is a short ride. Let's roll. Salute. Best wishes and luck, Dominic Costa. P.S. I love your comments, reviews, and critiques. Leave them here or contact me at dcosta one hall at gmail.com. I have quite a few YouTube videos, too, on this book's topic that I know you'll find informative and helpful as well. I have a special playlist with this topic as well as videos on my uh, other adventures on making money. They are informative and inspiring. Well, I like to think so. Check them out. I've been blessed and married to my beautiful bride for over 20 plus years, and I can and want input, any input to get there because I've gotten input for those 20 years from that beautiful, strong-minded bride so I can deal with some input and criticism. Don't even hesitate. Thank you so much and happy and safe scrapping. Acknowledgements. A big thank you to my wife, Pamela, and my children, Lauren and Jacob, for all of your love, support, edit editing skills, and inspiration on Daddy's Many Adventures. I also want to thank Glendon Cameron for the hustling and creating inspiration. Check him out on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. A big thank you to also to you for choosing this book and taking the time to listen to it and taking a chance on my recipe for success. This is my big thank you as well as for reading this book all the way or listening to it all the way to the end. If you liked what you've heard, please take a moment to uh, leave a nice comment or share it. If you do buy the book, please leave a great review. Disclaimer and FTC notice, no part of this publication may be reproduced or transmitted in any form or by any means, mechanical or electronic, including photocopying or recording or by any information storage and retrieval system or transmitted by email without permission in writing from the publisher. While all attempts have been made to verify the information provided in this publication, Neither the author nor the publisher assumes any responsibility for errors, omissions, or contrary interpretations of the subject matter in this book. This book is for entertainment purposes only. The views expressed are those of the author alone and should be not taken as expert instruction or commands. The reader is responsible for his or her actions. Adherence to all applicable laws and regulations, including international, federal, state, and local governing, professional licensing, businesses practices, advertising, and all other aspects of doing business in the United States, Canada, or any other jurisdiction is the sole responsibility of the purchaser or reader or listener. Neither the author nor the publisher assumes any responsibility or liability whatsoever on the behalf of the purchaser or reader or listener of these materials. Any perceived slide of any individual or organization is purely unintentional. All prices for recyclables listed in this publication were the prices available at the time of the writing and the speaking and the location of the author. The author has used all vendor links that you'll see in the written book and the ones mentioned at the time of this writing uh, audiobook publication, and they were functioning as well as useful to the author. The same applies for any apps mentioned. The author is not responsible for any of their actions, inactions, should you use them. Thank you for listening to my book, and please get out there and hustle and be safe. Get out there and make that money. This is a short ride called life. You deserve it. Go get it.